babes and welcome back to You Do You with Jessie Retro. Now today I'm feeling kind of chilled out and ADHD doesn't come normally with a chill button so I don't know what's going on with me today but let's just have a nice chilled talk. Um, I'll try my best. <laughs> so what I'm going to talk to you about is Bjork, right? Bjork is one of my greatest idols of all time. But before I do that, I wanted to say thank you so much for all of your support, whether you've been on the Facebook group or you've just liked and subscribed or watched the videos or interacted, put your selfies up, anything that you've done um, to help me um, progress with my project, I cannot thank you enough for. Anyway, so let's have a nice little talk, talk about Bjork, a Bjork talk. <laughs> so Bjork is a singer from Iceland. She was born in 1965 into a family that was classical uh, musicians. By the time she was five, she already had, um, she could already sing, sing um, classical music and she could already play classical piano. She was really, really lucky and very, very talented. By the time she was 11, she was a child star in Iceland and she had her own album out, which was titled Bjork. She didn't like this though, because she wanted to make her own music and the person who had produced the album had like encouraged her to do, to do covers of Icelandic songs, but she wanted to flourish in her own way in a true Bjork fashion. So uh, by the time she was 14, she started off in a punk band and she went and progressed on to another band called The Sugar Cubes, um, which were very much of its time with punk elements and abstract elements and very much Bjork putting her own um, stamp on things. Uh, coming up to her 20s, she had kind of outgrown all of this and she'd also... Um, she was coming to a point where she wanted to move on with her life and that is when she came to England and she'd met um, some some pop stars from Manchester that helped her progress with that. Um, and she was very, very talented and clever. Now, the one thing I love about Bjork and the way she is is because she explained in one interview that um, the reason she sings so strange, <laughs> I guess that's strange to some people, and the reason why her dress sense is so out there is because when she was younger living in Iceland, her... Um, whole influence was not singers and pop stars that she heard but the nature of the Icelandic um, landscape like the volcanoes and the water and the ice and the cold and the blizzards and she said that she'd find herself often walking through blizzards and singing um, and she'd have to sing loud to sort of compete with the Icelandic winds so she her voice is actually it sounds really uh, like unworldly um, and it sounds like out of control but actually it's really in control and it's very very classically trained so this is why I love Bjork so much because she is very much her own person and the, the fact that the uh, landscape yeah it's it's completely molded her as a person and that is why she stands out completely against all these manufactured singers and artists of the, of the time I guess and so on in the 90s, she took a lot of the rave scene and techno beats and the ecstasy of the 90s also influenced a lot of Bjork's movements and music. But one thing that she's done throughout all of her career as a, an artist, because she's not only a musician, but she's a visual artist, is she has um, wanted to create a, like a fairy tale. Every one of her songs isn't a song so much, it's a story and she's the main character. And it, sometimes she's not even a human, sometimes she could be an alien or bacteria or flower or anything and she's she is the main star and it's all written by her and it's like her imagination it's an absolute insight into the head and the mindset of Bjork so if you ever check out any of her music videos try not to look at it as this is strange this is out there but try to look at it and think this is imagination this is raw imagination and it's amazing when you see things in a different way so yeah the reason why I love Bjork personally in my own, sorry, personally for my own um, reason is because growing up, you know, when you're younger, you like pop stars, for instance, and you like, you know, my friend had blonde hair and blue eyes. She wanted to be Britney Spears. My other friend with, with Joel Heritage, she would always Mel B in the Spice Girls. I have this unusual look. Um, and I couldn't put my finger on it. Now, people have always saying to me, like, are you Chinese? Are you Oriental? Are you Asian? And I had a really big identity crisis growing up because of this. It really was a struggle for me because 
when you don't understand, I mean, I know both of my parents, but looking at my dad's side, we have an unusual, like, you know, quite Asian features. There, there were like rumors of maybe being Italian and this and that. So I, I needed to do a DNA test so I could understand myself. I did it and it came back that I'm actually quite a big, significant amount of, um, of Scandinavian blood. Bjork's from Iceland. So it's kind of near Scandinavia. It's a Nordic place. Um, it, it, it's kind of wishy-washy. Some people class it as Scandinavia and some people don't. But it all started to make sense. I have, like, maybe maybe these these genes and this face is not Asian. Maybe because my bloodline came without any Asian. Um, I'm, I've got very, very strong European blood. But... I, I thought to myself, maybe this is Scandinavian features. Maybe me and Bjork share something so much in common besides music and an art because we are both Scandinavian, like our heritage is Scandinavian. And that just gives me goosebumps because I embrace that so much. I think everybody should embrace their differences and really love who it is, you know, the genes, the DNA that makes you, you, you should live every aspect of that. And it took me a long time. And I think I've got Bjork to, to thank for that. So yeah, I chose Bjork because she influences me and the more I learn about her, the more I'm like, this person and me, we, we're like so similar. So the reason why I've chose this outfit, um, because of like I say, you know, in the in the picture before which you saw, I just think it's like, a, it's just so beautiful. You could wear it every day. You could wear it if you were going out for a meal or you could wear it to go to the shops if you wanted to. And I tried to replicate it with, um, the jumper is a £12 jumper from eBay, which is actually River Island. It's not really mohair. It's actually red as well, whereas Bjork's is orange, but I kind of like the red. The dress is a traditional Chinese dress made of silk, and I tried to get it as similar as I could to the pattern on Bjork's dress. Now, the reason I'm not wearing it myself is because after the second baby, I put on, I put on a bit of weight so it don't fit, and I don't want to risk stretching it out and all that. And the hair was lent to me by my friend Sophie. I kind of did what I could do with it to get it as that style. So yeah, there we go. That's a, a little bit about that and a little bit about Bjork. Now, the reason why I'm not out there dressed up like Bjork is because actually I've put something together that's been influenced by Bjork, influenced by nature, and is everything that I've got out of my own wardrobe. And I wanted to make my own um sort of like bjork inspired look which I'm, I'm going to be wearing so yeah take notice of the next clip but before i go i just want to say thank you again to everybody who's supporting me big ups to sarah and the rest of everybody else at slimming world in fair weather green because soon you'll see me wearing this dress because i'm trying i'm trying